Today I'm going to talk about another substance that's sold online, another experimental chemical, not approved by the Food and Drug Administration, strictly experimental, almost very, very little uh, human research. There is some research on it, though. There is some research. This particular substance, uh, unlike some of the previous uh, substances I've talked about in my videos, is not a peptide. It's an actual straight-on drug. Uh, what I'm talking about here is called teso, tesofensine. Tesofensine. It's, it's, it, like I said, it's a drug. It's not a peptide. Uh, it was originally developed uh, to treat, believe it or not, Alzheimer's disease and mental disorders because what it is, it's, a, it's what they call a triple monomine reuptake inhibitor. In other words, it, it, it modulates three brain neurotransmitters in the brain. Dopamine, dopamine which, which influences motivation, focus, and reward pathways. Norepinephrine contributes to the resting energy expenditure. And serotonin promotes feelings of fullness or satiety and reduces cravings. So, uh, they again, the tesofensine was originally developed because it works with these brain neurotransmitters. It was developed to treat brain diseases, but it failed in that respect. It, it was a complete flop, you know, uh, treating uh, brain diseases. It's kind of similar to aspartame, which was developed uh, uh, originally, I'm sorry, Vi Viagra, or sildenafil, which was developed as a blood pressure drug, failed as a blood pressure drug, but but the uh, people that were testing it found themselves getting erections, and you know the rest is history. Sometimes you have this serendipitous effect where a, a drug is developed for one purpose, and it turns out to fail at the purpose it's being developed for, but it's good for other things, and that's what tesofensine is another example of that. Uh, now, the as far as from a bodybuilding standpoint, uh, it, it's it's actually considered I should say it's considered a a uh, a uh, uh, whatever you call it um, a weight reduction or a fat loss drug. It's in some ways comparable to the GLP-1 agonists like Regovi and Ozempic, but it works differently. Uh, similar to Ozempic uh, in the GLP-01 agonists, it, it's very strong appetite suppression. So let's say a bodybuilder is training for a contest or on a low calorie diet. This stuff will control your appetite to the extent that will make it far easier to stay on the diet. Uh, and by reducing uh, appetite, you also reduce caloric intake, and you'll also increase caloric expenditure, especially if you work out. It, it, can, it, pr it promotes uh, tenso tesofensine, uh, promotes significant fat loss, including the mo most dangerous type of fat, the deep-lying abdominal fat called visceral fat. Uh, there's some studies that suggest that tesofensine can help preserve lean muscle mass, during a caloric deficit, very important because one of the major dangers of extreme dieting is loss of muscle mass. And uh, tesofensine, uh, unlike the GLP-1 agonists, which where people tend to lose muscle, tesofensine tends to actually maintain muscle. Uh, the, now, the increase in dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin not only leads to enhanced energy and motivation, but it also can uh, can counteract mental fatigue and mental burnout. Uh, now, the uh, the potential side effects are increased heart rate, blood pressure possible. Again, so like norepinephrine, dopamine, uh, you know, these can increase blood pressure. Uh, the uh, it's if, uh, somebody who already has high blood pressure or possibly cardiac or heart disease might want to avoid this thing. Uh, because, again, it stimulates certain uh, brain uh, neurotransmitters that are involved in alertness. It can, lead, it can also uh, promote insomnia, sleep disturbances, dry mouth, uh, gastrointestinal issues, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, just like the GLP-1 agonists. Some people, because of the increase in dopamine and, and, um, and norepinephrine, they get anxiety and restlessness. Again, it's not FDA approved. Uh, and uh, w what else can I tell you about this stuff? Again, it was uh, originally developed to treat neurode neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, let me see if I can get some research on this. Uh, let me see. Okay. There was a trial. Okay. Actually, there was a human study. Uh, the, the, uh, it was demonstrated in a 24-week randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. That's the gold standard of science studies. It was published in The Lancet, 
and uh, in, the, in this uh, study, 203 obese individuals were divided into four groups. Placebo, 0.25, 0.5 milligram and 1 milligram of tesofensine daily. All participants followed a calorie-restricted diet where they reduced calories by 300 calories a day. The results at 24 weeks showed that uh, the average body weight lost for the placebo was 2%. Those taking the 0.25 milligram dose of tesofensine lost 6.7% body fat. Those taking the 0.5 milligram dose lost 11.3% body weight. And the one, the people who, uh, who uh, took one milligram of tesofensine lost 10.6% body weight, which is fairly comparable to the G- GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic. Uh, the, and interestingly enough, the 0.5 milligram group experienced the greatest overall fat loss with better tolerance and fewer side effects than the one milligram dose. So what, it, what that means is for, uh, according to this study, the 0.5 milligram would be the ideal dose if you want to use tesofensine for weight loss. Now the, the, uh, the other finding of the study, most of the weight loss came from visceral fat and abdominal adiposity, in other words, fat around the gut, which is very important because visceral fat is the, by far the most dangerous fat. It's associated with insulin resistance, diabetes, and heart disease. The, the uh, people taking the uh, tesofensine maintain their lean mass. Like I said, the, U, the most popular weight loss drugs today, the GLP-1 agonists, were Govi, uh, you know, Zempic, and, and some of the other ones, uh, you know, including a regu- Regulatide or something like the new one that's not really available yet. It's only available on the internet. These things are known to cause muscle loss, especially if you don't work out and you don't increase your protein into you, uh, 40% of the weight loss of drugs like Ozempic is muscle, and that's not good. Tesofensine significantly improved weight, waist circumference. In other words, the people using it showed a smaller waist and improved their lipid profiles like cholesterol, triglycerides, and their fasting glucose, which is, uh, helps prevent diabetes. Uh, the... Um, like uh, it, it, uh, one of the some of the advantages of tesofensine, it provides appetite suppression, no stimulant jitter, jitters. There's no jitters. There's no racing heart, no cold sweats, no none of the anxiety that can be caused by fat burner supplements that are rich in caffeine. Again, a great advantage of tesofensine, uh, really a big advantage compared to other weight loss drugs, is that it uh, it preserves uh, muscle. It preserves, spares muscle tissue. Uh, almost all the fat loss with tesofensine, I'm, I'm sorry, almost all the weight loss with tesofensine, tesofensine is fat, not muscle. Uh, again, because it, incre- it increases dopamine and norepinephrine, these are the feel-good chemicals that elevate mood. So it makes it easier to go to the gym. You have more med- motivation, more focus, and more, uh, more mental uh, concentration. Uh, so it also, um, let me see what else I can say. Well, as I, t- I talked about the dose range, uh, you know, the, the uh, usually the three types of dosage, 0.25, 0.5, and 1.0. Again, the uh, 0.5 is probably the uh, ideal dose because you get strong appetite suppression and it's well, well balanced, less chance of side effects. You get better fat loss with a one milligram dose, but there's an increased risk of side effects like insomnia, dry mouth, and blood pressure spikes. The, t- uh, the tesofensine, it's best to use tesofensine in a cycling fashion. Eight to 12 weeks is the best. Uh, some people who use it, they take intermittent five days on, two days off to manage tolerance. Uh, usually you take it fasting in the morning to blunt appetite throughout the day and avoid sleep disruption. Tolerance can build up to the drug after four to six weeks at the higher dose, like one milligram. The more you take, the greater the chance of do- tolerance, which means it won't be working as well. So you, you might want to consider cycling off for four weeks or switching to another peptide, uh, to, to a peptide uh, drug, like some of the other ones I c- covered, uh, if, it, uh, if, if, if you notice that the weight loss is not forthcoming. Uh, again, the people who have uncontrolled hypertension or cardiovascular disease should avoid tesofensine. If you're taking any kind of antidepressant, you should avoid t- tesofensine. Uh, if you have a history of severe anxiety, panic disorder, or, or, or cardiac rhythm disturbances, no tesofensine. 
pregnant or breast win, uh, breastfeeding women should avoid it because they, there isn't enough research to know the effects on pregnant women. So the best way to use it is to start out at 0 0.25 milligram and gradually increase the dose. You can go up to, again, one milligram. Don't take it with caffeine, Yohembi, or any other stimulants. It's not necessary. This has a natural stimulant effect without causing extreme stimulation. You want to keep, keep a close eye on your blood pressure, heart rate, and sleep quali quali uh, quality. Uh, if, 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 uh, if side effects persist or worsen, you want to discontinue it. Uh, so let me see what else can I say uh, I think I, that, I let me let me see the unlike uh, the GLP-1 tesafentine does not cause nausea or gastroparesis which is a kind of frozen stomach effect which is very serious it does increase mental drive and energy which can improve adherence to training and diet uh, no very little cardiovascular stress other than possible blood pressure increase uh, probably less than you would get if you took anabolic steroids. So uh, let me see, what else can I say? Uh, it's classified as a research chemical. It's not approved for human consumption. Uh, it's usually sold online through people who sell peptides and research compounds. It's not on the DEA controlled substance list, but it falls into the gray area under FDA enfor enforcement. It's not listed in the uh, World Anti-Doping Agency as a, as a banned drug. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, now, if you want to uh, consider buy tesafensine, you want to like, uh, you know, look for third-party lab testing to make sure it's, again, as I mentioned in previous videos, when you buy this stuff online, whether it's tesafensine or, or peptides, you never know what you're getting, you know, because these are not legitimate uh, for some pharmaceutical companies. They're they're kind of, you know, just people that set up shop online. You don't know anything about them. You don't know quality control. So, you know, you want to request third-party lab testing. You want to have uh, transparent ingredient sourcing. You know, check out the vendor reputation and, and possible customer reviews. And uh, it is an oral drug, so that's good. So you don't have to inject it. So that, that's what's good about it. And uh, I think that really covers uh, tesofensine. Pretty good stuff. I mean, uh, uh, again, it's my, you know, it's, it's again another drug that I admit I'd like to try, you know, especially when I'm trying to lose weight. But I mean, the fact is that there isn't a lot of, the research I read to you is probably the only research I could find, human research. Uh, it does seem to have pretty good effects as far as weight loss. Uh, it's really comparable appetite suppression to the uh, GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic, which is very impressive because um, it, it causes appetite suppression similar to these uh, expensive drugs, uh, and it also, uh, it also uh, preserves muscle, which the other drugs don't do. That's the big advantage of tesofensine. So, you know, if you're considering to buy it, I already checked. The prices seem to vary between um, anywhere between a hundred dollars and up. Stuff is not cheap. It's it's, it's expensive. It's another expensive drug. So I think that's about it for tesafensine. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti aging research, uh, uh, ergogenic aids, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't. Uh, what else? Women's health and fitness hormone therapy. All of these are covered in my Applied Metabolics publications. comes out on the first of every month. No ads. Strictly in-depth information cover covering everything related to nutrition, exercise, and general health and medicine. And of course, uh, anti-aging is a very important aspect too. <laughs> so uh, subscribe today. It's at AppliedMetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me a sh an email and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post brand new information on nutrition, exercise science, and medicine. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything that they're curious about related to nutrition, exercise, and I will answer the question. However, I don't talk, discuss anabolic steroids. I will not provide anabolic steroid cycles. Uh, frankly, I think those who do are quacks and they're engaging in very dangerous behavior because you never know who you're dealing with out there. I mean, you you have kids like 12, 13 years old looking at these videos and these schmucks 
are telling them to take doses of trenbolone uh, and dangerous drugs that could kill these people. I think they're disgusting. I think that those videos should be banned because, again, there's no screening. Anybody can watch those videos. It's very dangerous. I won't engage in that behavior. I think it's very unethical. Now, uh, on the other hand, I, I do discuss anabolic steroids and applied metabolics, but what I discuss is scientific studies related to uh, anabolic steroids. I, ca I also write case histories of bodybuilding athletes who took anabolic steroids and maybe they had some problems. I discuss why they had the problems, what they could have done to avoid the problems, and so on and so forth. So again, subscribe today, appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, if you, uh, please also consider uh, subscribing to my video channel, this channel. I post a new video every Tuesday. Uh, there's, uh, that, that, as you notice, there's no ads associated with this video. Uh, there's no 10% discount. Anytime you see a video where the guy is talking about giving you a 10% discount, uh, he's a shill. He or she is a shill. They're getting paid a lot of money by the companies that give out the discount to get you to buy their products. So, you, you know, they, those guys can't be trusted. They're being paid a lot of money to push those products. I mean, my personal thing, and I'm not telling you to do this, is as soon as I see a video where the guy starts talking about 10% or starts showing pictures of supplement, I turn it right off. I'm not interested in watching advertisements. I, I don't care how good their information is. Uh, you know, if they can't give straight information like I do, I'm off. I'm, I turn them off. That's it. You know, but that, that's your choice. I'm just telling you that, you know, you got to be very wary of these people. It's, uh, the Internet and YouTube in particular has become extremely commercialized. This channel is one of the last of the non-commercialized channels on the entire Internet. So, I mean, uh, please, again, subscribe. It's free. And, tell, and please, by all means, tell others about my channel. Uh, if you want to have the best thing you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.